What is going on you guys? My name is Rage and we are back today with another legendary ranking video. Uh, it's been a couple of months since I've actually done this now and it's always great to review and take a look at the Marvel Strike Forces legendary characters, uh, where they rank right now in the game in terms of which ones are actually even worth building, leveling up. And again, keep in mind, this is contextually, it will be based on where you are in the game as well, but I hope this video is able to at least give you some insight and perhaps um, further you along in your farming journey for the legendary characters. So very easy, if you go into the roster here and you filter for legendary roster, you are gonna get a selection of all the legendary characters in the game. And this even includes Omega Red coming to the game, um, especially once the Weapon X is available and he's gonna synergize extremely, extremely well with them. That being said, um, it's very easy for you guys just to look at my roster and say, Hey, uh, Adam Warlock, Ebony Maw, Phoenix, they seem to be the most powerful in my roster. But does that also mean that they're the best characters in the game right now for legendaries? And those were the ones you should be prioritizing. Uh, this is what this is going to be about, right? So what I've actually done here is on the screen, uh, I've taken the time as per the link below in my YouTube description. Uh, this spreadsheet here for a legendary ranking, I try to keep it updated at least every couple of months. If there's been any significant changes in the game, because keep in mind, with the changing meta, uh, the fact that some teams are in, in the arena, such as the Infinity Watch, uh, there's going to be some movements. And as you can see right now in this ranking, the only character that's actually used in the legendary roster right now is Adam Warlock for the arena side. So at the end of the day, this is not a black and white uh, analysis in terms of who is the best, but it ultimately will depend on you know where you are in the game. Uh, what your goals are in the game, you know, whether it be arena, do you really want to push through and, and really perform in war, uh, or even potentially raids. And last but not least, it also depends as well on your roster availability. It gives you an objective reference in terms of where the characters lie in the game right now, but again, it's going to be subjective to what your personal experiences are. That being said, now we are able to at least take a look now from an apples to apples perspective in terms of looking at these characters in terms of breaking down are they used in arena, campaign, raid, war, dark dimension, and as well the last column being legendary ranking, which is in this case uh, required as part of a legendary character event. So there have been a couple of movements here, so that's why I did want to talk about it briefly. But um, what you can see here at the top is Jubilee and War Adam Warlock are the top two right now. Uh, based on their rankings of really being diversified in Raid, War, Dark Dimension. And you can see Jubilee gets that little touch up there with the legendary ranking. However, Adam Warlock is the one that's going to be dominant in the arena. And that's what the top tier players are going to care about because you, they want to maximize the power cores. So you bet they're going to want a, a team that's relevant and is able to actually provide value and get you those power cores. You can also see I've also included a farming difficulty here. So what this means is it kind of dictates how hard it is to actually get these characters and if you're comparing apples to apples and you're a newer mid-game player uh, it would hands down mean that Jubilee is actually the easier character to unlock as opposed to Adam Warlock. Why is this the case? Well if you guys know about the requirements Adam Warlock is actually uh, requiring Jubilee as part of the legendary unlock so that's why he is more difficult so you also want to use this farming difficulty column as a, as a source of reference to really kind of gauge you know how difficult is it to obtain these legendary characters at the end of the day, especially if you don't have them and you're trying to uh, really analyze it from a objective standpoint. Rankings of threes is where it gets a little complex in terms of how they all fare. As you can see, you know, this cluster now is gonna include the new legendary of Omega Red. Dr. Octopus is here. Nick Fury actually moved up here because of his recent upgrade as being part of legendary unlock for uh, Omega Red. We got Ebony Ma, and then we got Phoenix. So I'm, I'm highlighting this because this does not align with what I have right now in my roster. And it's it's important to assess that because that power doesn't necessarily reflect where they are right now in the game in terms of being utilized. But what I would urge you guys to do is really take a look at what you need right now. Do, are you looking for the all-rounder that can unlock raids, war, and dark dimension? But also take a, take a step back and actually take a look in terms of farming difficulty. If you get a chance to unlock a moderate, before a hard difficulty obviously that means you're going to get a chance to actually use that character before and and as you can see on this list omega red is the only one that's very hard because with his unlock he actually needs nick fury as part of the unlock and nick fury is actually one of the hardest legendaries to unlock in the game uh despite the funny fact that he's not even that useful earlier but with his recent usage and utilization of being required now, uh, he's one of the few legendaries that actually requires multiple characters that need to be farmed that aren't really useful. In this case, it is the Kree minions, right? And uh, they're difficult in the sense that the majority of them are in campaigns, but also in raids. Even some of the mid to late game players don't 
have the cream minion characters built up because they're honestly just not used in the game they don't have any other use in the game besides the exception of unlocking nick fury so that's why even with the recent update and release of Omega Red, many players experienced ones were also a little surprised because of the fact that they never need a Nick Fury for any other reason. So a lot of players will likely have him at a five yellow, maybe a six yellow, but they didn't really push for it. And myself, I was also included in that boat as well. So uh, that's why that's why it's so difficult right now. And that's why he is ranked as the only one that's very hard because of that requirement in the sense that he requires a legendary that's not even used in the game. Conversely, you have characters where at least Adam Warlock requiring Jubilee. Jubilee is used in the game. Uh, same with Ebony Ma and Black Bolt. This cluster of threes, it's really going to depend on what you need in the game, right? As you can see, um, at least all the ones ranked with the threes, they're all very similar. They provide a value for Raid, War, and Dark Dimension. So at the end of the day, it's going to depend on the roster you have. But uh, I definitely think Ebony Ma, Phoenix, uh, Dr. Octopus, they deserve credit because I actually use them all in Dark Dimension. So because of that, I think there's always going to be a use case in the future, especially if you're planning to bring them into Dark Dimension 5. So that's why they're very they're very good legendary characters, but they're not the best, but they, they're really well-rounded, right? Uh, last being said, this brings us to now the ranking twos, which ranges all the way from Black Bolt, Star-Lord, Shuri, Invisible Woman, and then lastly, Magneto. And you can see the majority of them actually are ranked as a farming difficulty easy. So these are the ones I would recommend, especially if you're new to the game. I would recommend on uh, getting these characters first. Uh, more specifically, Shuri and Invisible Woman are the, are the two that's going to provide a lot of functionality. Because uh, early in the game, you may not realize it, but there's just not a lot of defensive-minded characters. Uh, characters that provide support and healing. And Invisible Woman and Shuri do an excellent job of that. Uh, rounding out the roster so you can have high offensive characters in the beginning uh, but yeah, defensively minded characters are not that available yet and that's why it's so nice to have them early in the game the other nice thing about Shuri and Invisible Women that maybe newer players may not realize is the fact that they actually um, you can actually unlock both of them with five characters if you really want to uh, reason being is because Shuri requires Spider-Verse whereas Invisible Woman requires Sinister Six and actually all the uh, Sinister Six characters are included as part of that Spider-Verse. So you can definitely find some synergies there to, de to unlock two legendaries with the price of one. So that's where that value does come from. And the fact that now one, at least one of the two events is a permanent legendary in the game and being Shuri. So that's why it is good for especially newer players. Go back now to my roster here and now compare it back to that spreadsheet I showed you guys. It is similar in some respects, but keep in mind, um, I'm very heavily involved in raids. Uh, Dark Dimension is something I did pride myself in in terms of maximizing value. So you can see it is somewhat aligned to that, but it's not perfect. Um, the, the really obvious one, though, is going to be Adam Warlock. And hands down, he is probably right now the best legendary in the game. So I did want to talk about that for a sec. Part of the reason is he's getting credit for being the main meta in the arena. But not a lot of players realize the fact that, you know, he's one of the few characters that actually has a double stun in the game with his ultimate. Um, he's got that chance to actually stun a second time. He's also got his special for the ability block and disruption to any of the protectors. You know, preventing that taunt, especially if you want to make sure that you're continually attacking targets you want. So that's really important to note. Having those two abilities already makes him a very powerful character overall. He has a natural revive with his passive here of the Avatar of Life. And keep in mind, this is not including his benefits that he provides for his Infinity Watch team. So that's why, hands down right now, Adam Warlock is the best legendary in the game. Best all-rounder, and his kit is very strong as well, statistically, with him being coming uh, in that post-Silver Surfer era. His statistical uh, data is actually better than the other characters released before him. So this is a character that I would highly recommend building. On top of that, um, he requires another useful legendary in Jubilee to actually unlock. But, you know, overall, I, I think it's without a doubt, even with Omega Red coming to the game, um, he's going to provide a lot of, he's going to shake down a lot of metas with what he brings. But keep in mind, Omega Red's team is designed more for war, not um, not specifically Dark Dimension, not specifically Arena. So um, even though he's coming to the game, he's going to be very, very powerful. Uh, I don't know if he's going to take that number one spot from adam warlock right so that's why in my opinion um it's great that we're getting another legendary for options but as of right now in terms of where they stand i still think adam warlock for the short term at least in the next six months he's still going to be on top of the meta so that's why i would encourage 
especially if you guys are playing and you're trying to build your Infinity Watch, there's still value there for sure. Uh, even if you want to use those characters for Cosmic and Dark Dimension nodes, the Infinity Watch is still one of the best teams, one of the few teams that can take down the War Juggernaut and the Heroes for Hire team. So, I mean, there's a there's a great amount of value there right now that I would still recommend. So that so far has not changed. And the runner up is gonna be Jubilee. A couple reasons why, uh, she's got a handy stun, um, she's got beautiful blinds that she's able to actually distribute to the enemies. And on top of that right now, Alliance just started Doom 2 and hands down, the mutants for the Astonishing X-Men are the only ones that seem to be able to have even a chance with the, with the Doom 2 node. So uh, because of that, Jubilee is going to at least have a place for that because of the fact that, you know, if you guys don't, may, may or may not know, Doom 2 is the only way to unlock the teal uh, orbs that allow us to prepare for Dark Dimension 5. So because of that, her team is going to be cementing for a little bit here and let, until they actually release another method for releasing teal gear for us as players but um that's why those two right now are in my opinion the two top legendaries in the game right now that you should focus on they work in tandem because it's nice that jubilee is part of the adam warlock unlock as well so i hope this video is able to give you guys some insight feel free to check out my spreadsheet as i do try to update this at least once a month and as well if the meta changes i'll reflect that so thank you as always guys do appreciate you hearing me out and hope this is able to help you in your journey for your future legendaries thank you and I'll see you in the next one.